Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this tiny little album step by step and it's made using one sheet of 12 by 12. Now this is what we call a meander book or how I've always known it as um, being called a meander book and I probably learnt this around about 2005 when I discovered scrapbooking. Um, it was in one of the scrapbook magazines so this technique goes back absolutely years and it, it, I think it does actually go by a few names. So. Okay so the papers I'm going to be using today are from the Grand Day paper out. This is Simply Made Crafts and I've had a really good delve into this paper pad so I want to choose something that is quite busy all over. I have a lot here that are going to be perfect for scrapbook pages and I think I'm just going to use this top one up here. I've used this lovely floral one for that one. So I'm going to pop that on my scoring board. I'm trying not to make too much of a mess beside me, but I always end up doing so anyway. Okay, so this sort of book is called a meander book. That's how I've always known it. Um, the first one I made was around about 2005, 2006. So these have been going around for a very long time. Um, so you may know it by a different name. If you have a different name for this book, let me know down below in the comments. So I've just scored at three, six and nine. <clears throat> and then I turn it once and I'm going to score again at three, six and nine. So I'm going to make sure that everything that I've used today is linked down below. There's also a link to my website um, where there's a project page for this project. So it will have the video, it will have the links for everything and um, the measurements that I have just um, put in. So I'm just going to fold all of these score lines and I'm going to hold it this way because there you can see all of the score lines if I turn it over it might be a bit tricky so we're going to be working on this side so i'm going to grab myself a craft knife and a ruler now this one is the tim holtz ruler it has a metal bar down there because i'll be using this with a knife um, a metal ruler will be just as good so i'm going to grab my pencil i'm going to take this off my compass so i'm going to be doing a line from this section here all the way down this section here all the way up and then this section again all the way down so that's going to give us like a M or a W sort of um, shape once we have done with the cutting so I'm just going to line everything up oops I went a bit off there okay remember to hold down firmly on that I'm going to have to fix that with scissors and then on the top here, again, if you want to use a, um, a paper trimmer, you can do. Especially if you have one of those paper trimmers with one of, those, one of those little arrows on the cutter. So you can do precision stopping and starting. So it's always helpful to add your little dots here so you know where to start or stop. And we have something that now looks like that. I'm going to fix that. So I'm just going to grab my scissors. Just trim that off. Again, if you do use a paper trimmer, you will get um, a straighter line basically. And there's no rulers moving about. So all we have to do now with this M shape or W shape is to start folding. So I'm going to start folding from this way here. So we have it in the M and it's the right way up. And we're gonna fold it back just like that. Go grab your bone folder, give that a crease and then fold under. So this is where it gets the name meander from. So I'm just gonna lift that up there and fold that down and then we are just going top over basically over and under tidy up that piece 
So as you can see, this is where it gets the Meander name from. Okay, so I'm also just doing my best to make sure that everything is square as I go along. This is why it's really good to have really good, well-scored lines for this, for this book. And then give them a really good press. Okay, you should now have something that looks like that. Looks a bit funny. Okay, so we're gonna be using this side here. This is gonna be the front of the book. This is going to be the back. So try your best to remember where you are with this. So we have here this middle section. We're gonna turn this bit here into a pocket page and I want to have my opening at the top. So I'm going to turn this over and on the second square, I'm gonna add glue just to this line here on the left-hand side of the score line and along the bottom. Now I'm preferring glue because if I use tape, then any sort of insert that I pop into this pocket could uh, get its corners stuck. So wet glue is always good for this. Okay, so we have our first pocket created. So again, I'm keeping it in the orientation that we'll be using the book in. So the next page comes down like that. So I'm just deciding I would like my opening for the, for the pocket page to be on the side. So I'm going to add glue to the top bit along there and then down the side otherwise we risk our insert coming straight out the back especially if you're not going to put a covered um, spine on the back you can do I've left mine quite blank there but you can actually go ahead and do a little spine <coughs> okay so keep working your way around so this one here is going to be another top loading pocket so basically i'm just going to be alternating these pockets Okay, so I've got all of my pockets done now. So I'm just gonna grab myself a circle punch. Okay, I'm just gonna use, going to use a one inch circle punch. This one is from the Stampin' Up. But if you have any, of, any other sort of circle punch that you're able just to quickly do something like this with, then any circle punch will do. So again, keeping the orientation of my book the right way round, I'm going to pop my first thumb hole in the top page here because it is a top opening pocket. And then I'm gonna work my way through the album. So this is a side pocket here, so I'm, just, I'm gonna do the same there. And if you're wondering why I have my initials on there, I used to be a Stampin' Up! demo, so I used to do workshops so to stop my my kit getting mixed up with any of the customers stuff that they would normally bring themselves it's just a lot easier just to have your name on everything okay so those are all of the little um thumb holes now so let's move over to some craft cardstock now i've cut all of this from one a4 sheet i keep bopping the microphone i've made all this from one 
A4 sheet of craft cardstock. So this is the nice side. This is the other side. So let's give you some measurements. So these are all going to be the little pockets. So let's grab the ruler. These measure two and a half by two and a half. So let's pop those in. missed the last one out so I just popped another half circle in and that has filled up my book so that was seven inserts for seven pages this is really coming together really nicely I really love how this is looking there we go so let's work on the covers now so these measure three and one eighth by three and a quarter so the reason why these are slightly off square is so that it has the overlap either side and quite evenly around so we have one edge that's butted right up against here so we still need to have that even one eighth of an inch around the edge still so i'm going to add glue to the front cover just here on the front flap here it's a lot easier to add it to this section than it is to add it to that square and then try and um, get it right. So I'm just going to make sure I have this in the right orientation. Again, you can open up your book just to kind of squiggle it into place because I'm using the wet glue. I can get that in at the right place. There we go. Now I just need to do the same for the back cover and then we are practically on the home run so then you can just after this you can pop in your photographs print them off small there we go right so for the front covers and the back covers I'm just going to use some more papers from the paper pack and I'm going to mat them onto um, silver mirror, co mirror, mirror card and again the cutting guide for everything that I'm doing today will be on my website so that will be linked down below it will take you straight to the page so you won't even have to look for it Okay, I'm going to pop that on now. okay now for the front cover decoration now i've used um, a little label tag tag thing from um simply made crafts labels and banner die set now i've used this one here but all of these are super pretty and some of them are stitched and they are lovely and small as well so these are going to be perfect for cards as well as uh, mini albums um should i go for a different shape that's quite large maybe I'll go for that one okay I'll go for that one and I've taken the heart from the stitched and pierced nesting dies um, hearts die set I don't know if this is currently in stock if not I will find something similar if you really like the heart shapes 
And I've also taken out my also new, my mini one. It's been a long time since I've used this, but it's just perfect for when you have little um, things that you want to die cut. I think, I don't, I'm not sure if I need this or not. Uh, we'll put it through and see how it goes. So we've got some silver mirror here. Is that big enough? Only just. I'm going to put some tape on there. Okay, I might just have to put that metal plate on. Find out. Oh no, we're good, we're good. There we go, there is our banner done. And um, we just need the heart now, so I'm just gonna trim this out actually. I have absolutely no idea if this little die cutting machine is um, still available. Um, if it is, I will link it down below and it's three inches wide. It's a really handy little gadget. Okay, and there is our heart. I'm going to have to have a big tidy up after this. Okay, so let's get this popped together. So I'm going to pop that on there with a bit of glue. And then I'm going to mount this heart onto a sticky foam pad thingy. just to give it a bit of dimension. So, um, is this fully gonna fit? No, okay. Um, we'll go for something about that size. Don't be afraid to cut up your foam pads, especially if they're on the larger side. I'm just gonna have to trim that down again. It's easier to cut it when both sides are on backing paper. There we go. I'm going to pop that in the center and there we have a beautiful little mini album. Now that was so quick and easy to make. Let's see how long that took me. That's taken me 18 minutes. So um, some of this will be sped up for you. So it, the video is gonna be shorter than 18 minutes. So this is a beautiful little album that you can make from just one 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So if you want to see more ideas um, for 12 by 12 um, mini albums, just like one sheet albums, do let me know down in the comments. I have plenty more ideas on how I can make more albums using one sheet of paper, or maybe even just two. So if you like this one, give me a thumbs up. Everything that I've used today will be down below in the description box, and I'll see you again soon.